The first time your grandfather forgets your name. The little girl in you is standing too far away from him with a cup full of water in one hand and a fistful of expectations in the other. You had anticipated a day of playing in the garden with him today as usual, but the vacant look in his eyes are too haunting to be rehearsed, and from that day, the flowers in the garden will go seven years untouched by him. The doctors called it dementia, but I call it hell trying to burn the heaven out of your memories. This pompous disease, deceptive and brash with its destruction, left my grandfather with just body and breath, invaded his brain and started a war with his memories until his body eventually surrendered. This was a man who had a tranquil spirit, a man who never bothered the birds even when they built their nests on the trees in the garden, a man who deserved to at least remember himself. But soon this disease turned all our names into a foreign language to his tongue, turned our presence into ghost-like silhouettes to him, took everything he ever built and crushed it, then lay it bare before him as if to say, well, sowing and reaping only works perfectly in the garden, but not here. Here in real life, the same body that keeps you working for years will someday betray you, will someday strip you of everything you ever had because everything you ever had was never yours to keep in the first place, remember? My grandfather spent years chasing his past. Each day he ran more and more out of breath and closer to his finish line. Spent years waking up a stranger in his own memories. How haunting of a memory. To watch your body become a time machine. Watch it reverse back to 10 years ago as it erases everything you've learned like learning wasn't hard the first time already. The doctors called it uncurable, called it disease, they called it dying. And I had nothing to give him but hands for hugging and this too felt like death. Because for some of us, home is the people we love, so it's hard to accept when your warmth can no longer shelter them. The doctors called it dying, called it disease, told us that his body would only get weaker. But I can still feel the weight of his smile lifting me up, and this is my definition of strength. Note on loving your grandfather with dementia, one. When he smiles at you, smile back, two. When he asks you for the fourth time what you're cooking for dinner, pretend like it's the first time you're hearing the question. Three, and when he begins to turn violent, don't make the fear blatant on your face. I promise he never meant any of it. The first time your grandfather forgets your name, the little girl and you will giggle at the silliness of old age. But when you realize that he still stood there on move with his legs stiff like obedient trees, you will ask him if everything is okay. And his reply will be, and from that moment, you learn to accept that silence will become his way of answering, and that someday our body will become a memorial to the person we once were, and that someday our bodies will simply become memorials to the people we once were. Thank you.